discuss in the initial part, we will discuss the meniscus anatomy and its clinical implication followed by the meniscal injuries. As we know that in the knee joint, there are two menisci, medial and lateral. Both menisci are joined together anteriorly by the intermeniscal ligament. They are semilunar fibrocartilaginous structures in the knee. As far as parts are concerned, so there are two parts. You have anterior horn, posterior horn and rest is a body of the meniscus. So similarly in the meniscus, posterior root or posterior horn, anterior horn or root and rest of the body. It is important at this point for you to understand that the lateral meniscus is far more mobile as compared to the medial meniscus because it has got lesser rigid attachments. It has got no capsular attachment near the popliteus tendon. It is far more flexible as far as interposterior movements are concerned. So therefore, it is less prone of injury except in ACL tears. If you see in ACL tears, you may find more lateral meniscal injury, but rather than in the routine life, in routine movement, it is the medial meniscus more prone for injury because of the rigid att attachments. So both the menisci we are going to discuss under shape and size, their roots, how are they attached, what is the vascularity of the meniscus and what is the clinical implication, what is the nerve supply, how the mechanoreceptors and microstructures they are responsible for the you know the structural integrity and how do we use this microstructure in when we are talking about the meniscal repairs. So both menisci largely especially the medial meniscus now we are going to discuss about the medial meniscus it is semicircular wider posteriorly you can see here it is wider posteriorly than anteriorly. The mid body width is about 7 mm here so if you ever take the MRI in this midsection, you will not find it more than 7 mm. And how do we use this information? In a mid body coronal section MRI, both medial as well as lateral, if you see the meniscus wider than 7 mm or 10 mm and definitely reaching 14 mm, you classify it as a DM that is disquired meniscus either lateral or medial depending upon the side. It almost covers 50 to 60 percent of the medial tibial plateau. There are two roots of the medial meniscus, anterior and posterior root. I have written the anatomy, you can read it as well. The importance of the posterior root of the medial meniscus is which we will discuss when we are talking about the, uh, the root tears. Today in the last decade or so, the medial meniscus root tears have been diagnosed increasingly. They are being found more commonly in the middle-aged women, especially you know 40 to early 50s. They do, they suddenly come to with a complaint of knee pain, which is generally acute in onset, which starts after getting up from the squatting position. Climb, trying to climb the bus or coming downstairs. And this pain is usually located posteriorly, relentless, does not subside with the conservative medication. There are two people who have worked extensively in the field of root tears, especially on the medial side, that is Robert Laprath. You will find a lot of articles of Lord Robert Laprath of late, but there's one man from our country who actually initially described the root tear almost identical to what has been described of, of late. That is our own senior, Professor Nicholas Antau from Mumbai. In a very initial editions of the IGO, that article was published, but it never gained any widespread, um, you know, the importance because of the lack of arthroscopy. By the time people started recognizing, the more and more literature was coming from the West. So in India, it was the, the Nicholas Antau sir who described it very well. 
in the IGO and later on today most people follow the work of Robert La Prague. So I would suggest that you do read meniscal root tear, medial meniscus root tear separately. You will find a lot of review articles and do read about them because it could be one of your recent advanced question. I have written the measurement, there is nothing. So we use these measurements when we are trying to repair the root, you know, onto the, when it evolves from here, that is what I was trying to tell you, when the medial meniscus root tear happens, it just evolves. So to, you know, to re-anchor the root, we need to know these landmarks. Medial meniscus is very extensively attached to the tibia with the help of posterior medial capsule. So you see that this is the posterior medial capsule, menisco tibial ligaments where they are all around, posterior oblique ligaments, medial collateral ligament and semimembranosus. Semimembranosus is a dynamic structure which actually in the deflection kinds of pulls the meniscus backwards to prevent the further injury to the medial meniscus in deflection. In this particular figure, you can see the, this is the medial meniscus. This is the meniscofemoral ligaments, which are also known as the deep MCL. And this is the meniscotibial ligaments. Coming to the lateral meniscus, lateral meniscus is more like a O, is almost like a completion of a circle. Medial meniscus is half. Lateral meniscus is more of a complete of a circle. It is more uniform in width, about 9 millimeter anteriorly and 10 millimeter posteriorly. The mid body width is about 8 to 9 millimeter. So as I told you in the medial meniscus, if this is more than 14 mm, the width, then you can call it as DLM, discoid lateral meniscus. Similar to the, the medial meniscus, but more here, it covers almost 70 to 80 percent of the lateral tibial plateau. So it means that the lateral meniscus is covering far more lateral tibial plateau percentage wise as compared to medial. Also if you carefully analyze the tibial plateau, the lateral tibial plateau is a bit more convex, this is fine whereas medial tibial plateau is a bit more concave. This is your medial meniscus. This is your lateral meniscus. And this is your femoral condyle which is round. So if you carefully analyze, the medial compartment of the knee is actually convexo from femur side and concavo from the, concavo from the tibia side. Whereas this one is convexo and this is also relatively convexo. So the lateral side is a bit more, you can say it's a bit more incongruous. It's a convexo convex joint. Whereas the medial side is a concave convex joint. So medial side is relatively more congruous as compared to the lateral side. And therefore, the lateral meniscus is more important making a relatively more incongruous joint too congruous as compared to the medial meniscus because that side of the joint is already more congruous. And again therefore, whenever there is a lateral meniscus tear compared to the medial meniscus tear, we always try to save more lateral meniscus because lateral meniscus is very important for the stability of the lateral side because it provides relatively more stability compared to the 